Hello, welcome to Subjective. This is a series of interviews with contemporary fashion models to try and establish really the history of fashion photography through their eyes. Um, if you happen to be watching via Show Studios YouTube, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe below. Welcome to Subjective. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go through a series of pictures that you are in and very famous pictures that you are in and just ask you to explain a little bit about what it was like from your side. Okie dokie. So without further ado, as they say, let me start with the first one. So in some way a sort of chronological. So there we go. Ah, oh, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Latigan's picture of yeah, you. Yeah, darling Barry. If you Google Twiggy, this is the first picture that comes up okay. and every variation of that picture. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, and it's also amazing because wherever I go in the world, that picture is somewhere on a T-shirt, on a handbag. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah. Um, and it is, it is probably the most famous picture of me from that period. The first session I ever did in, in fashion photography. Right. It was so, a test shot, actually. Very good <laughs> test shot. Can we start right at the beginning? Where's the name from? Where's Twiggy the from? The name came from my first boyfriend's brother. OK. Who used to tease me, because I was, as you know, I was fairly tiny. Yes. Um, and I had very skinny legs, which I right. hated. Right. And he used to call me Sticks. Right. Because of my, my stick-like legs. <laughs> And I used to get really angry, and somehow Sticks one day turned into Twiggy. Yeah. And it was a nickname, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I met Barry to do that test shot, which came out of m m my having my hair cut, yeah. with Leonard, yeah. the famous haircut. Yeah. And um, Barry did the, all the photographs for Leonard's salon of his yeah. new haircut. So it's not really a test shot. I went over there yeah. to see if. He, uh, Leonard wanted to see if I was photogenic. Yeah. And Barry sat me in front of the camera. And I, that makeup, because people always think makeup artists did that makeup. That was you. They weren't makeup artists no. then. No, I'm no, talking no. about before the first one. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 60, 66. 66. 66. 66. And yeah, it would have been about, well, it would have been in February 66. Right. Because that's when I was kind of launched onto the world. Not to anything to do with me, it just kind of happened. Because I went and had the photograph taken, and that was my makeup. I was a mod. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've read that you've said that. So mm. when you say you were a mod, what do you mean by that? I was, in that period, teenagers were usually mods or rockers. Right. The rockers were rockers. They yeah. wore leather yeah. jackets, yeah, yeah. rode motorbikes. I mean, I was, I was a mini mod, really. I, right, I didn't okay. go out. I didn't go to Brighton, my mum and dad. Right. I was young. I was 14, 15 when yeah. I was a mod. So I wasn't. I was allowed out on Saturday nights. Right. And we used to go to a mod club in Harrow. Oh, OK. Uh, above Burton's Tailoring. Oh, really? And we saw certain people called Eric, Eric Clapton and the Yardbirds really? and the oh, animals. Brilliant. Amazing, amazing people playing. They were all new young guys in the music business. So they yeah. were playing little clubs then. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I saw amazing people play. And that's what I looked like, but I had long hair. Yeah. So how were you travelling? On a tube, by bus or on bus. scooter? Yeah. By bus. Bus. Right. And it was very specific the way you dressed as a mod. You had yeah. to, everyone, it was like a uniform. You had to be dressed yeah, yeah, like yeah. everybody else. And it, was, it wasn't good for my body, really, because... <laughs> well, you know way? how skinny I was, and, and the look was kind of grey pleated skirts below the knee, hush puppy shoes, which are like oh, really? brown lace-ups. I must have looked like olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> and your hair was how before Leonard it? It was parted in the middle, long, kind of like that, because mods either had that kind of shape, yeah. or they had it chopped all off and it was spiky. Right, OK. That was the look, but I didn't want to have mine cut. And so when... Um, a friend sent me to see a, a, um, a woman at a magazine. I think it was Woman's Mirror, I think. Right. A long time ago. And she suggested I go to Leonard to have my hair done. Right, okay. To do some test shots. Right, right, right. right. And, and I was just going to have it set, and then Leonard came over and said, I want to do my new haircut on you, which is right. what changed my life, really. Yeah. And I almost said no. Can you imagine if I... I probably wouldn't be sitting here now <laughs> if I'd have said no. You never know, you never know. But I was too shy faint. and nervous to say no, so he cut my hair. So we know from this from looking at you, what were you looking at looking this way? I was looking straight into the lens of the camera. And what could you see other than the lens? Uh, I could almost see my, ref you know, you can see a kind yeah. of reflection but of But was myself. there music playing? Yes, but I don't know whether you know 
darling Barry. But I don't personally know. Uh, well, he, sadly, he's, he's not that well now. But um, oh, um, when I first met him to do that photo, he was a new young photographer yeah. who'd just come in from South Africa. Yeah. Right. And he was very softly spoken. But I mean, I was lucky, really, because, as you know, in photography, light is everything. Absolutely. And his lighting was superb. Yeah. So if I'd have gone to a lesser photographer, yeah. again, it might not have happened. Because it is a very beautifully lit oh, salon but shot. That's what he did. He did, yeah. he did beauty shots. That yeah. was his forte. Yeah. So I was really lucky. My first experience in front of a camera was with this very, very clever photographer. And was it just him and would you have uh, an assistant? It was, no, he had an assistant and yeah, there was music playing, but I think yeah. it was classical, it wasn't. Right. And he was very gen he's a very, very gentle man. Yeah. As well as a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. And, and he knew I was scared and, and he just said, just look at the camera, just look at me. And, and then he chatted to me and, you know, la and we got chatting and laughing. But it is an extraordinary shot, isn't it? Absolutely, it's beautiful. How long would a session be? Is this, this were you one? there for hours or minutes? I can't, I can't you know, it's 1966. So yeah, no, sure, I'm, I, I realize I've it. got a, a vague memory. It was probably an hour or two. Because right. I was already made up because I did, right. as I said, I did yeah. my own makeup. Yeah. And at that session, somebody said to me, Twigs, because I was introduced as Leslie, which is my name. Right, yeah, yeah. And somebody, with me said, oh, Twigs, blah, blah, blah. And he said, what did he call, oh, Twiggy. Yeah. And, I, and he said, what did he call you? And I said, Twiggy. And he said, I said, it's my nickname. And he said, well, if you ever do model, you should use that name. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then that picture or one from that session went into Leonard's salon. Yeah. And I went back to school. I mean, that should have been the end of it. And yeah. then one of Leonard's clients was a big journalist for the Daily Express. Right. Yeah. And she did a big article. She, she went in, saw the picture and said to Leonard, who's the girl? And um, he said, oh, it's a young school girl called Twiggy. She yeah. said, I want to meet her. Right. So I went up to Fleet Street. I mean, yeah. I didn't even know what an interview was. You know, I was so green. And yeah, yeah, also, you've got to remember in that period, you know, models weren't written about. No. Newspapers didn't do things on fashion. It was, it no, was no, kind no, of a whole other thing. Yeah. So I met this really nice lady. We had tea. She chatted to me and said, I'm going to write about you yeah. in two weeks. My dear dad, bless him, he used to go down to the paper <laughs> shop and buy the Express every day and nothing, yeah. nothing. And then one day he could, look, look, Les, look, Les. And it <laughs> said, Twiggy, the face of 66. Uh, so uh, you were at school at the time. I was. I was what were you going school. to be What in your mind? I wanted to be a fashion designer. Oh, so fashion was already a thing yeah. for you. So the mod thing was part of And I that. made all my own clothes. Right. Yeah, so I was very into clothes. Yeah. But obviously when that happened, that day... Things changed. My life changed forever. Right, and when the newspaper came out, what was the first moment that you realised something was happening? Well, when I saw it in the paper, you didn't, um, you know, I was a little girl from Neeson. Yeah. I was in the newspaper, a whole page. So did then somebody phone you afterwards? Um, well, how, how did it go from being in the newspaper to you actually starting on a career I, modelling? I started to get via the newspaper because I wasn't with an agency. No, no. And if I'd have gone to an agency, they wouldn't have taken me on. Because no. actually the first person I met before um, doing this shoot... Yeah. I was sent to see another uh, um, fashion journalist for a big, for Queen magazine, which right. was a big fashion magazine. Yeah. Well. And she sat me down and said, look, you've got a very interesting face, mm. but you're much too small, you're much too slim. Right. Because uh, I'm, I'm only five, six and a half. Right. And you'll never really become a model because of that. And I was really, I remember going back at home on the bus and, and being really upset. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And... But then about a month and a half later, this happened and was in the papers. Yeah. And, and it just snowballed from yeah. then. I was booked to go to Paris and finally knew it. And I bumped into her. We were in a restaurant about six months later and she yeah. came over to me, bless her, and said, I goofed, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, just slightly. <laughs> but, you know, from her point of view, she was right. I didn't look like anybody else. Yeah, but that's how things change. I know, I know, I know. You know, because just... Pre me, if you look at the girls before me, a year yeah. or so before, yeah. you know, it was Shrimped and all those yeah, yeah. gorgeous creatures. So who, who were your heroes or heroes? Well, she was, Shrimpton, Shrimpton was all over my wall. I yeah. thought she was the most beautiful thing I'd yeah. ever seen. And Verushka, 
Jane Birkin. Right, OK. Moira Swan. Do you remember all those girls? I, obviously all the first row. I don't know Moira Swan. Jill. God. But it was Shrimpton mainly, because she was just so exquisite. Yeah. And I did love Verushka because she was just so exotic. So did you feel, because obviously, you, you know, your face has been used almost to epitomise the swinging 60s. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of, obviously you had other things afterwards, but it was that moment was crystallised yeah. in how you looked. So did you feel part of the swinging sisters? 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 Well, I was sisters. part of it. But it's interesting because, you know, I do a lot of interviews about, because people seem to be obsessed with the <laughs> 60s, especially well, young people. Well, it's a huge time of cultural yeah, change. Yeah, but young people, now you think it's going to go away, but every decade no, it kind so. of bounces back. But when you're living through a time, you don't... You know, when I started actually modelling, I was yeah. just working every day. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. was being... You know what it's like. Yeah, you're yeah, sure. A, uh, become a kind of top model. You, you work, you travel. I didn't do catwalk because in those days... It was a bit. It was a bit snobby, actually. If you were right. a fashion model yeah. for photography for yeah. magazines, yeah. you didn't do the catwalk. Oh, really? They had the girls. They had all the big houses had their own girls. Yeah. Right. But the fashion, the photographic models like Shrimpton, like me, like yeah. Morris, like all the ones I've kind of remembered and named, they did the photographs. Right. Penelope Tree was another one in New yeah. York. Um, and it wasn't until, I think, when all the, the famous five came out. Was it for Versace? Yeah. You know, Linda yeah, Evangelista Christy and, 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 and yeah, all and that. Lot. Yeah. And they came out because he, he put them on the catwalk and yeah. then it all changed. So I never right. did catwalk. I right. was I was a photographic model. Right. Did you resent that or feel you wanted no, it to? Just was, just it just was. What it, happened? That's no. If you know, I was thrilled. I was a photographic model. Yeah. <laughs> was there a hierarchy? There was other pole. Yeah, there was. That's what oh, I said. Okay. It was a great. So, a photographic model yeah. was a kind of yeah. what you wanted top, to be. Top of the notch. Right. Yeah. Okay. There were there were glamour models. We yeah. knew what they were, Absolutely. and that was fine. But that, mm -hmm. I wasn't. Gonna, there was no way I was going to be a glamour model with my body. But um, so to be a. And fashion models yeah. were, the, you know, the photographic ones yeah. were the top echelon, really. Especially if you work for Vogue or Queen or Harper's or yeah. whatever. Um, but again, it was weird. If you work for Vogue, you couldn't work for Harper's. They oh, really? were like okay. arch enemies. Right. But my next big break came when Diana Vreeland, who yeah. was the um, editress of American Vogue, yeah, yeah. She read all this and saw what was happening yeah. with me in England, and she took me to New York and brought right. me with well, Richard Avedon. Talk about that. Very Hello, next. Paul. Perfect segue into that. But before <laughs> I leave, um, young Barry Latigan and the swinging sixties for a minute. Okay. Obviously, Bailey's name comes up a lot, mm -hmm. and quite rightly because he became also yeah. to epitomise that era. But you didn't work with him that no. much. No, not till much later. Is that because, because... he was Shrimpton? No. Was his... No. What happened? And. You know, I, I don't think it was him per se, but there were, at that time when I was discovered, there were yeah. four big photographers, Bailey, right. Donovan, Duffy and Montgomery. Right, okay. And they were all under one kind of management. Right. And they discovered all the girls. Yeah. Morris, well, I can't, again, I can't remember all their names. There, were, there was a whole group of really right. hot models, yeah. Shrimpton being the queen. Right. Um, and, but they discovered all the new models. Right. So... I came out of left field yeah, yeah. and they, listen, it probably wasn't even them, but their management put out a big story saying, um, you know, the, the, four, the four top guys in photography banned Twiggy or something. It was so stupid. What, why? Because they didn't discover me. Oh, OK, and so they, they, what, they, they missed the, the boat The story somewhere. was that if they didn't discover me, then you I can't be... So you went above them and went <laughs> to American <laughs> Avedon. Yeah, Very good. Well, you, well, I didn't plan that. that no, it was but it's because kind of... Freelum. But it's quite an interesting story. So I didn't actually work with Bailey until much, much later. We did, we did work. We didn't do a lot together, but I've, there's a couple of shoots, I remember, and I think yeah. I'm in a couple of the books. But that beginning... I didn't actually work with them. Right.